to our parallel event on human rights situation in Pakistan. I would like to leave the first words to our chairman, Mr. Sathanan Sithal. Thank you, Lena. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, distinguished guests, speakers. I'm uh, honored to have you all here and to, to listen to the facts and uh, the situation of minorities in, are facing daily in Pakistan. Can you imagine that seven months have passed, seven months have passed, <coughs> Still, they haven't been able to, 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 to remove that water. The people are sitting on the pools by the water that has been there seven months. The decaying water, the, 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 the water with the foul smell, which you can smell from miles. And that water is full of disease, of microbes. Of, of, of viruses and uh, 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 bacteria and fungi. Missing persons and mutilated bodies in recent months. According to data collected by the Baloch Human Rights Council, the kill and dump policy had brought brutality in the province to an unprecedented level. VHRC sources verified that in January 2022, 48% went missing while nine were extrajudicially killed and their, and their mutilated bodies found. In February 2022, the number of missing persons was 29, while seven were extrajudicially killed and uh, mutilated bodies recovered. Why is all this happening in Balochistan? To understand the, this, understanding the context of baloch pakistan relationship is imperative. The forceful annexation of their state in on March 27, 1948, and various subjugation and assimilation strategies of Pakistan were unacceptable to the Baloch. So promotion of peace, security, and respect for fundamental rights and freedoms are some of the value and objectives of the European Union. If the EU treaties, like the Charter of Human Rights, ensures that the peoples of Europe, by establishing an ever closer union amongst themselves, shall peaceful future based on the common values. A guy inside. When the mob was not happy, they took the victim outside and attempted to set his body on fire. Muhammad Waris, a man in his mid-30s, was the victim of the lynching by adhering photos to pages of the Quran and hurling them on the ground. As he was taken into prison by the police for the claimed crime, they failed to protect him. According to the reports, the attacker, Hassan Kaular, committed the assault because he thought the man who was residing at a nearby shrine had been performing devotion in front of several graves. Every time, the same tragic series of things happen individual accused of blasphemy and then subjected to the extrajudicial judicial, sorry, judgment of Muslim men mobs. The Pakistani government does not view it that way. It asserts that these laws are necessary to appease the enraged crowds. They are seen as a remedy for gang justice. I want to ask you a question regarding blasphemy laws in Pakistan. As you said, uh, blasphemy is criminal bringing from mandatory life sentence without penalty. Do you think there is a correlation between the existence of this law and governmental discrimination against minorities in general and in Pakistan? But of course, as I said, uh, I believe that um, the government implements these laws just to appease tension, but the, uh, we have the opposite of that. We have, again, we, have, we justify this uh, hatred, we justify this violence towards um, uh, people who are accused of blasphemy laws and the mob group uh, uh, taking revenge and, and uh, ta uh, I mean, um, giving themselves the opportunity to be uh, uh, justice seekers.